Hey, Triple Threat listeners, it's Tom. And before we begin, I want to let you know that we at Triple Threat are in the process of selecting a new theme song. For years, we had been using the song Sweet Emotion by Aerosmith, even though we don't really talk about Aerosmith on this show. We have not yet selected a new theme song as of this episode, so you'll just hear some generic intro music for the time being. Thank you for understanding, and hey, if you do want to contribute to us having a theme song, be sure to leave a comment on this episode. Thanks again, guys, and enjoy. Speaking of which, the first one on site, too, is wow, right? <laughs> <laughs> wow, indeed. It's the Beatles doing Chuck Berry's Roll Over Beethoven, led by George's incredible guitar licks, George's incredible vocal, the incredible energy, the incredible hand claps and the power. And yeah, the song is in- incredible. And all, <laughs> all power to Chuck Berry. I have another it. word, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's, again... Another great song, regardless of who sings it. Okay, is it is the is the guitar solo like not from this originally? Because I know I've listened to the original Roll Over Beethoven. The guitar solo at the beginning sounds different when the Beatles did it. It sounds more like the Johnny B. Good solo to me. Yes, I've noticed okay. that too, and I didn't know if it's just like sixties rock sounds the same. Like sure, it definitely. I'm picking up on what you're picking up on. Thank you. All right. I don't Good. think I'm, I'm glad I'm not just crazy. I don't think I've really thought about that because as much as I love Chuck Berry and I always think about this quote that Brian Wilson said about Chuck Berry. He's like Chuck Berry could use the same three chords, but he could make three chords sound so good. Mm. And I'm like, I totally agree. Like I could listen to say five Chuck Berry songs in a row and like they'll all sound different. But he makes a lot of the same things on paper sound different on record fun fact about this one about this song if you don't count the ed sullivan shows as live performances because it was you know even though it wasn't part of a, of a of a select crowd and broadcast live this is the first song that he was played in concert in the states oh okay yeah when they came and played at uh washington washington coliseum this is the song that they open with that's kind of cool right. and you know they love yeah. america they love american music and Hell They're yeah. Giving it back to the country that uh, that gave it to them. Even just kind of thinking about the lyrics, even though, of course, they did not write this song. Again, it, it points the direction forward. This song is, you know, years before the Beatles recorded it. But Chuck Berry is the one who's saying there are new people who are setting the path now, who are pointing the, the, the direction in which music has to go or yeah, is going. Very apropos for them to Definitely. be covering it, especially on this record. Yeah, mm-hmm. very appropriate. This is another one I'm thinking about when you mentioned that uh, that Bob Dylan quote. Knowing someone like Dylan and other musicians, they were probably very aware of uh, Chuck Berry. So to see them do this song, they're like, right on, man. You're just keeping that message very alive. Yeah. And it's funny, like, this song was, I think it was first released in 57 by Berry. The Beatles have been playing it for years when they put it on this album. Uh and it would just it would just occasionally pop up here and there. They played it through '64. Um, you can hear it in Superman Three of all places. Oh wow! <laughs> because Dick Lester directed Superman Three. Oh, um, there's a connection. Uh, he direct he directed Hard Day's Night and Help. Uh, and then uh, a few years after that, George and his 1991 Japan tour would often close his shows with Roll Over Beethoven. It was the song that he knew so long, so much so that uh, there's a great bit on the BBC where George is asked by the host to play Roll Over Beethoven. um, And George says something like, I've been singing it for 27 years. Of course, George isn't even 21 at this point. (laughs) (laughs) He's he's, he's like, yeah, I've been doing it so long. I've been doing it before I was born. (laughs) (laughs) And, And it's not just him alone. John has a great quote where he says something like, if they, meaning the audience, if they want things like Long Tall Sally and Roller Beethoven, we can do that standing on our ears. Oh, yeah. 
So this is just one that was just part of their repertoire. They could just break it out at any point and they really always just have a great time doing it and do a great job on it. Yeah. For sure. All right. Then I get, so, uh, I, so then the elephant in the room emerges. This song is stupid. <laughs> this, uh, the song is stupid and it doesn't need to be there. You know what? I'm so, not gonna, I'm, I'm gonna hold it back. This song is sh So yeah, stupid. okay. We're talking now about uh, "Hold Me Tight," another God. original. Why do we go uh, from written, the high of Rolliver Beethoven to this? Yeah, written mostly by Paul. This one. The song is stupid. Uh, this one, yeah, this is one of the ones that was supposed to be on "Please Please Me," and they decided it wasn't good enough then. Don't know why they would. Decide to put it in here now, except uh, we need to we need to fill some space, boys. I was like, well, this one's done. Yeah, it's it's, but is this... it good? It's done. No, it's... no, Paul, it's done. It's like uh, that's that never-ending joke about Little Caesars. Like it's, it's, <laughs> it's hot and ready. Is it good? It's hot and it's ready. <laughs> and it's five bucks. <laughs> the song was hot and it was ready, and that yeah. was that was it. It, yeah. it, it. it is done. Is it good though? No, it's done. It's just this big, blustery, clumsy, annoying, empty thing. Yeah. And yeah, and, and even like I don't, I don't understand it. This is one of the very few documented examples of Paul McCartney singing off key. Yes, I have noticed that too, and it bothers I, me literally every time. Yeah. yeah. It He's sounds on. like he was he was over singing through most of it that he was just oh. trying so hard that he just kept whiffing notes. Well, do you know how long this song took to record? How long? Not exactly. 26 <laughs> takes. Oh my god, dude. No oh wonder. My goodness. If if I may be that person, this is the beginning of Paul taking too much time on a song. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. probably. I mean, they probably had to abandon it and please please me because they probably did like 10 takes it was like paul we need to spend more time doing other things okay you're right now they got more time to spend more time on it and they should have spent no time on it <laughs> yeah I, if i can say one good thing about this song it would be that i think the middle eight is kind of interesting the part where uh you know the tom toms are holding the beat but that's it mm -hmm. <laughs> i've got like, a quote a middle eight does not a good song make no i've got a quote from john that I want oh, to please. share. Oh, do uh, tell. John, I really want to hear this. <laughs> in, in 1980, you, you can find this in the book by David Sheff called All We, we Are Saying, which basically is a giant conversation where John goes through like every single song he ever wrote or did with the Beatles and solo. He gets to hold me tight and he says, that was Paul's. Maybe I stuck some bits in there. I don't remember. It was a pretty poor song and I was never really interested in, in it either way. Yep. Yep. Just goes I to think that sums it up pretty well. So instead yeah. of wasting any more time on this like Paul McCartney did, let's move on to track 10. <laughs> so yeah, uh, track 10 is You Really Got a Hold On Me, originally uh, uh, Smokey Robinson and the Miracles. Yeah, coming after Hold Me Tight to this one. Like, this one's a little bit better, but honestly, I, this one is is very repetitive. It's just at the, the just right slow tempo that I, I it, it drags for me. Same. Yep. It's the longest song on the album at three it minutes shows. and one second. And it... <laughs> but it feels longer than that. Well, just like the way they stumble through it, it's like, hold me, hold me. And just that really repetitive, you really got a hold on you. Yeah. I, I got to admit, though. Very tired sounding. Yeah. I got to admit, I think it sounds better than the original by The Miracles, personally. I mean, I'm sorry, Smokey. I'm sure you'd be a lovely guy to meet in person, but I'm, I'm just not feeling this song in general. I mean, it's about the same tempo that, that, that the Miracles do it. Yeah. It's just, it's and it, it feels weird to have, like, I, I get the feeling, maybe I'm projecting a little too much Liam Gallagher on it or something, but John sounds very, <laughs> John sounds very sarcastic in this song to me. <laughs> sarcastic? I never thought about that. Yeah, I think there's some pretty clear irony in this one that he's prob he might be doing intentionally. Um, but at least this one is replacing the really cheesy saxophones with the guitar parts. That, uh, that's fair. Yeah, and the, the piano sounds fuller. It's, eh, it's on the lower end, I think, of the covers of this, but it's not the worst. 
So it, it, it sounds like a fine cover. It just doesn't sound very inspired. Like yeah, that's a good way to put it. Just the way he's singing it, it sounds like it's like take thirty two, and then <sighs> you know, got to do it. it. Sounds like it sounds like he's getting tired, and I'm sure there are plenty of live performances by the Beatles themselves where it sounds really good. But since I never cared for this song in general, I I'm not going to be seeking them out. And this song, especially after Hold Me Tight, I'm kind of getting two in a row that I ultimately just don't like. Yeah. Yep. So, so what do you say we kick this bitch up to 11, you guys? Because <laughs> we all know the Ringo song is always the best song on any Beatles album. I mean, you shut your mouth, mouth it is. <laughs> this, you shut this your mouth one, it is. This one is very good. This one is an absolute banger. It's I Want to Be Your Man, you guys. This song is so good. It's funny that this has become like one of Ringo's signature songs. Of course, he yeah. didn't he did write it. John and Paul wrote it. And it was kind of given to him because the Beatles needed to do their own cover. We should give that away. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I Want to Be Your Man was originally written as a giveaway to the Rolling Stones, and it was their first minor hit. Yeah, because uh, that, by that point, they put out their first uh, single, which was a cover of Come On by Chuck Berry, and <laughs> that tanked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Their career was almost as over as soon as it began, but so John and Paul to the rescue. <laughs> so meanwhile, it was probably a 1980 interview that John was saying like, yeah, we didn't really want to give the Stones our best, so we gave them I Want to Be Your Man. And we didn't even really want to give our... <laughs> and we didn't even really want to make it great ourselves, so we gave it to Ringo. And I was like, oh, dude, oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, that's John, the same guy who asked, is Ringo the best drummer in the world? Ringo's not even the best not drummer in the, the Beatles. <laughs> Beatles. <laughs> that's a lie, and you know it, John Lennon. Uh, it's still funny. I don't know, man. <laughs> it's still funny as hell. Oh, yeah. No, but yeah, I want to be your man. It's just, it is a really straightforward and simple, just upbeat okay. rocker. Yeah, so, it's... It's straightforward. It doesn't. It doesn't overstay its welcome. It feels just long enough. It, it, it doesn't make you wanting more necessarily, or it doesn't make you feel like oh, it's dragging too long. It's just long enough that when you're over, you just slap your knee and be like, "Good old Ringo. That was a good old time." Hell you yeah! Know, basically, it's like, all right, that was nice. It was good. Yeah, and it's it's. I, it might just be the track order on this, but That's this true. song. <laughs> <laughs> this song and All My Lovin' are like the best remembered and most revisited tracks from this album. Oh, yeah. Like, Ringo's, think about that for a second. I mean, Ringo still does this when he's in concert only because, you know, it's one of his most recognizable songs. I think it's like one of seven songs he did with the Beatles. But sure. it's, also, it's also, you know, I, th this phrase is so overused, but it's so true. It's Ringo. It's Ringo say, singing, I want to be your man. And we go, yeah! Yeah. Go, Ringo! <laughs> go, go, Ringo. What's his name? Yeah. It's just awesome. You just smile and just like, that's Ringo. Yeah. This is also one of the only songs that he does while actually sitting and playing the drums, probably because it's really easy. It's really um, easy. On it's most a, fronts. <laughs> it's a very... The drum part is surprisingly intense, but... Like for for how it sounds, it's surprisingly intense. But at the yeah. same time, it's not, you know, it's not a Neil Peart drum solo. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, it's it's intense. And you know what else? You know, this song when the Beatles actually played live in their repertoire, this song out of the three songs that Ringo would would sing is the one that lasted the longest in their sets. Oh yeah, yeah. It started off with the Boys, and then I Want to Be Your Man, and then Act Naturally came along, but. By the time the Beatles stopped touring, Ringo was singing I Want to Be Your Man again. So it lasted the longest for him. Good. Dope. All right. So moving on to the next track, which is called Devil in Her Heart, written by Richard P. Drapkin. One of those guys, I have no idea who he is, um, but he wrote this song. He just, that, just wrote it. Uh, just, he wrote it. <laughs> originally a song by the... Donnie's, the Donnays. I mean, it's it's so it's it, it's so little known. Literally, the article that I'm reading from it literally says a little known 1962 song. So little so, known. Everyone out there, you're okay to be like, I never heard of that song because literally no one has until the nope. Beatles themselves have covered it. Well, it also helps that uh, the genders were originally reversed on the Donnays version of it. Uh, Devil in his heart. Um. This is the worst song on this album, song is in my stupid. opinion. The song is really stupid. Yeah. 
I don't really I care for it. The song's dumb. No. <laughs> That's the thing. Like, this album has some absolute bangers and some songs that are just duds. Like, they're not... Not a lot of them are actively grating or bad, except for Hold Me Tight and... Oh, my God, what's the other one that I hate? Um, you really got a hold on me? But actively dislike Little Child. Oh, oh yeah, that's yeah. the one. Yeah. Yeah, no, that one I actively dislike. But, like, some just fall flat. You really got a flat. hold on me is passive dislike. <laughs> some just fall flat. And Dead Letter Heart is another one of the ones that just falls flat. Like, it doesn't irritate me, but it's like, all right, that was fine. Like, I, whatever, dude. I think that of all 14 of these songs that this one has aged the worst, uh, that it is just... I told Tom, I only wrote three words about this song. It's that it's dated and sucks. boring. Oh, it's dated, dated and boring. And boring. But yeah. I, I was trying to guess what the three words were. <laughs> yeah, same. Tom, Tom's guesses were something like, this sh- uh, I skipped this. I- <laughs> <laughs> why is this here? Why, George, why? <laughs> like, no, no it's just, it just goes dated on. And boring. Dated and boring. This song, dumb. <laughs> this yeah. Song, dumb. Yeah. It's like, I, I have made... You know, like... <laughs> Do not I've want. Made, <laughs> I've made versions of this album that cut the crap and put on, like, From Me to You and other singles from this time period. Yeah. And Devil in Her Heart is not on here. Nope. Stupid. It's uh, dumb and it's, it shouldn't be here. This I'm is... just, I just sound like Becca now. This song's dumb and it should song's go away. Dumb. <laughs> yep, basically. Yeah, you're Speaking like... of songs that are dumb and should go away, number 13, not a second time. The song is stupid. <laughs> Aww. Oh, I don't man. like it. There's a lot of this happening here. Because this album didn't need 14 songs. I don't... Uh, yeah. And also, it's, it feels way too long, like we talked about it. Like, it feels too point... long, despite being a good 10 minutes shorter than most classic albums. Uh-huh. Yeah, like... like I don't even like passively dislike this. I think not a second time is okay. It's fine. It's got a good strong vocal from John and he he it's clear that he put a little time into writing this one and uh I really like the the piano sound on this. Thank you George Martin. Thank you George. I can find things to like. <laughs> yeah, the the piano, I do agree. The piano sound is good. I guess sounds so. nice. I, I, I guess for me, like thinking about the kind of person that John secretly was, you know, he was a he was an asshole. asshole. That's all right. Yeah, so, okay, John Lennon right. was not a good person. Like, okay, I I don't know if I'd we go can that own far. up to the fact on Triple Fed appreciating the art and to some degree separating the art from the artist, but like John sure. Lennon was a jerk, dude. Okay, yeah. you know we what? Can, that's... We can say this about Roger Waters. We can say it about John Lennon. I'm okay right. with saying that. And you know what? Waters literally hit both of his wives. But anyway, (laughs) let's go. (laughs) Yeah, point taken. (laughs) All right, so I will take that word jerk and say John was the kind of jerk that, you know, a couple albums later, he's writing about an affair that he had because he's he's a jerk he he did that he cheated on his marriage but with this song the roles are kind of reversed he's saying you hurt me then no no not a second time he was a jealous mother he He was really take what he could dish yeah so that's why like hands yep correct that's why i I do think he was overall a decent person oh yeah (laughs) you can be both (laughs) yeah yeah fair point yeah, that would be an unpleasant person who is good. Unpleasant, I think, is a very good word. <laughs> a great writer, but a very unpleasant man. Yeah, which is why I, <laughs> which is why I guess this song is okay because it's showing a very human side of John, and sure. it's show, yeah. and it's showing like, you know, John's not afraid to toughen up. I mean, sure, you know, he's good looking, he sings really well, he writes great songs, but you know, the dude ain't afraid to be a jerk. And so, <laughs> so maybe that's why the song appeals to me. But it's so short that by the time, again, my thoughts really form on it, the song's over. It's barely two minutes, and the album is almost over. But we got one final song to talk about, and that is "Money." That's what I want. Song slaps. Oh, song is so good. Yes. <laughs> like the song is good. Yeah, they did good. For oh sure. yeah. Another cover this time of a Barrett Songs track. Uh, yeah, 
the third Motown song in this album. So Motown really got their money's worth from this album. <laughs> yeah. No, I totally agree. Like, this is the one, like, you can only put it at the end of, of the album, or at least at the end of a side. Like, yes. it, Definitely it t- at the end of a, of a show. I, I believe they closed their set with this uh, sometimes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you can see why, because, again, you got more screamy, raspy vocals that would probably put John and Paul out for the evening after the show is done. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Even just, like, the way that this, this, this song ends, which is the final, that's what I want, dun, dun, dun. It's like, yep, <laughs> thank you, good night. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad that the, the second album here ends with, ends with a bang, not a whimper. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Also, man, just, like, side note, the guitars on this, really crunchy, really moody. They sound dangerous, and I love it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're dem- yes. they are just as demanding as the singer. Mm. That's something that's also prevalent in the original, and so it's yeah. it's the same here. And this is the only song that I've spotted a difference because I have the mono and stereo for this album. This is oh. the only song where I spotted any sort of audible difference, but it's very very minimal. When it opens with the great piano riff, dun 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 dun. There are that there are some guitars that come in in the stereo mix right right there too right at dun 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 yeah yeah <laughs> those cool. those those angry guitar notes are missing in the mono mix this is the only audible difference I found but like mono is punchy stereo has the punchiness that mono would have so for the, here you, you you can go either or but there is at least some audible difference in this song so you can't you can't go wrong either way nice. And so I love this song. There was even a time that I actually like took the hipster approach and thought this was a better cover than Twist and Shout, and then I realized that I'm a dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> it's still great. Like oh, yeah. if if Twist and Shout hadn't have been a thing, this would have been the thing to take its place, right? It's right up there. Like this is this kind of changes. Like imagine the Beatles are putting together the, together their set list, and they know they're going to end with a song where John rips his throat out. John might one night say, "You know what? I'm kind of feeling money tonight." Yeah, and totally brings the house down. And it's uh, it's such a great and it leaves you it leaves you thinking, "Wow, what a great closer!" And then you have to remember that it's track fourteen, and there are a number of songs that you have to look back and be like, "How to get through some stinkers to get here." Yeah, for sure. So overall, yes, I I do prefer with the Beatles over Please Please Me. That's that's personal opinion. It's like Tom, you said you like Please Please Me more, and that's totally valid. But I I do appreciate this is like there's a teaspoon more darkness in this album with stuff yes. like All I Gotta Do and Don't Bother Me, um, and Money, and it's like. I, I just appreciate the fact that these guys are willing to branch out a little more and not just do the happy peppy stuff. How was all I've got to do dark? I I just think, like mainly richer in, the sound. in tone. Yeah. Richer in tone. Yeah, mainly in the sound. Uh, again, talking about the bass chords. Yes. Okay. All right. I'll give you that. I guess because since I compared it to Buddy Holly, I think about, you know, Buddy Holly. Oh, he's yeah. Up, he's. he's I'll be smiling. Oh, but even Buddy Holly had some darker moments. So for me, I do prefer "Please Please Me" only because I guess I I take it in context. I know that "Please Please Me" most of it was recorded in a day, so it has that very energetic vibe. Like we're ready to go. Let's do this. It's our first record. And with the Beatles, I guess since they took more time, it was the idea of like, well, we can spend twenty six takes on "Hold Me Tight" because we can. And to me, that reflects but my enjoyment. Should. But should you? <laughs> yeah, but, but should you? And with the Beatles, for me, is like the really good sophomore album. How, how, are we familiar with that term, sophomore slump? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Didn't happen for the Beatles. Oh, no. Like, to me, it's like, this is the direction it, it had to go. Like, if they had just done Please Please Me Volume 2, you know, it would not be as exciting. But you can read into this album. Yeah, yeah you can read this album and say... There are parts of it where you might think it's Please Please Me Volume 2, but you can look into it. It's like, oh, there are double track vocals. That's new. There, mm. There is a counter melody. That's new. They're using- you got a song from George now. You got and- Paul coming up with something like, oh, my loving, and just immediately like, oh, so Paul is like on par with John as far as individual contributions go. Right. 
I feel like had this album had more originals, maybe I would like it more because it's the idea of, oh, they are progressing because mm-hmm. of, and then they, they get to Hard Day's Night, the third album, which is all originals. Right. And you see, this is why I rearranged the track order and with the Beatles to make it to, to sort of tip that balance toward more original stuff and to okay, cut we'll covers. All right. Um, since Garrett gave his uh, final thoughts and my final thoughts, we, I have some final thoughts that I want to read from fans that I reached out to, but Becca, any final thoughts from you? I think I'm in a similar boat to the two of you, although I think thinking of it in context, I kind of prefer this to Please Please Me because you could start seeing that evolution. Okay. Yeah. Back yeah. On. I was going to ask which of those did you prefer. So, okay. Not bad. All right. So I had reached out to uh, some people on Facebook. We did done, we done this before in our Egypt Station uh, review, reaching out to people to get more, you know, more feedback, not just our opinions. So I reached out and asked about with the Beatles, and we have some uh, comments that I want to read. There, there aren't that many. I'll just okay. read their first. I'll just read their first names, just in case they don't want me to say their full names. But if they're listening, they know who they are. Uh, Eric chimes in. <laughs> uh, this would be fun. He says, "Worst is hold me tight." I like Little Child. I know people don't, but the energy is fantastic. <laughs> but hey, cool man. I mean, yeah. you already know. I mean, you you already know our thoughts, but. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I can definitely hear the energy behind the harmonica. I mean, <laughs> uh, what else we got? Um, Jonathan chimes in. Uh, I always loved "Not a Second Time." It's definitely one of my top five favorite songs. Uh, huh. The worst is "Devil in Her Heart." Yep. <laughs> so not too dissimilar there. Uh, Joe, Good chimes, to hear. <laughs> Joe chimes in with uh, some uh, some longer thoughts. He says, "This is one of my favorite albums." Almost a perfect album. Okay. He says, the energy remains high throughout and such a significant leap in craft in both songwriting and recording, which we kind of touched on. Yeah. Uh, it, mm-hmm. it, won't, it Won't Be Long is one of the great album opening songs. While Hold Me Tight has some noticeable problems, both in writing and performance. <laughs> <laughs> ooh, ooh, doctor, I need to go to the burn ward for that one. <laughs> <laughs> but the energy is still strong. All My Loving is an instant classic. Thumbs up. The, yeah. cover, the covers are excellent. Roll Over Beethoven is an enthusiastic and effective tribute to Chuck Berry. I really like that. It's a tribute to Chuck Berry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. John, John sings The Daylights out of Please Mr. Postman with passionate mm-hmm. support from George and Paul, which, you know, I, I know we're done talking about that song, but we can't leave out George and Paul on that song. True. Valid. And, of course, one of their best performances ever is Money. That band recording... Oh, yeah. The band recording that song is a force to contend with. The electricity and threat of it are embedded in the vinyl. <laughs> nice. So that's cool. And then we got one last one. This one is uh, kind of a small story. Um, so this is sent by Richard. Richard said he grew up with this album mo- mostly as Meet the Beatles, which has most of the songs on this album, plus I Want to Hold Your Hand, This Boy, and I Saw Her Standing There, which were the American singles with the A and B sides. Oh, that would have helped on this one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and here's, so here's, he kind of wrote more about Meet the Beatles. So I was like, okay, fair enough. He says, love this album. I think I was 10 in 1976 when my father bought it for me on a trip into NYC. It was probably Sam Goody's. I remember him saying I could pick out one album of theirs and he'd buy it for me. I searched through the bin and pulled out Abbey Road. He looked at it and then showed me Meet the Beatles and told me this is when they were good. I know he never listened to them, so I think it was the long hair that he didn't like. But I took his advice and for the next few months, it's all that I listened to laying on my Shang carpet of my bedroom, just taking in all the energy and excitement of the music looking at it and reading the cover and thinking they look so cool and they sound amazing. It changed my musical tastes and shaped them for the rest of my life. My favorite song is It Won't Be Long, even when they played it in the anthology as they were returning to the UK after their first US visit. The goosebumps it gave me could have been from 1976. It was like being 10 years old again. An amazing song for sure. Probably my least favorite song, and that doesn't mean it was a bad one at all, is I Wanna Be Your Man. It's Ringo. It's a, it was a song they gave away to the Stones. By the way, I still have that copy of Meet the Beatles my dad bought me that day. It's beat, but it brings great memories. 
that's really sweet. I'm glad. I'm glad he has such great memories with it. And he, you know, he's right. Uh, it is a fantastic record. All right. I, I mean, I don't know if we want to rate it out of a scale of like one to ten or anything, but like ballpark in it, I think for me, I cannot go any higher th- than a seven. And I'm giving that on some of the real standouts, like All My Lovin', Don't Bother Me, Till There Was You, for me personally, uh, Please, yeah. Mr. Po- Please Mr. Postman, Money, That's What I Want, It Won't Be Long. And some songs like All I've Got to Do, like they're really well-crafted songs that I can't really say that much about. And there are some stinkers. I Like Little Child and Not a Second Time, I might say they're fine, but you guys are saying they're bad, so I'm going to shut up. <laughs> and and I really do not like hold hold me tight, just like you guys. So I'm kind of feeling seven. I was gonna go six and a half, but I think highest I can go is seven. So I'm gonna ballpark it and say seven. Right on. I'd say seven as well. It's passing grade, you know, it's it's good. Yeah, <laughs> the Beatles got a passing grade. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, combining with the viewing context, with you know how it holds up today. Yeah. I feel like both are important. And if you're thinking like, okay, here I am listening to this record in the year of our Lord, 2020. And it's like, hi, this is good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel similarly. Like I, I don't like giving number, number grades. So on a thumb scale of down, middle and up, it, it definitely gets a thumbs up. There's some definite low moments on here, but when you get to a good song, it, it's a bop all the way through. Yeah. It's totally worth it. There are times when I, when, I was going into this review thinking like, I don't know if I want to review this because I was ultimately jumping to, this is not one of my favorite Beatles albums. And it, honestly, it's, it's not one of them. It's not one of my favorites, but it's by no means bad. And maybe I'm just already focusing on the bad songs. I'm thinking it's a bad album, but it's not, I guess, yeah. the, I guess the, the stinkers on here really stink. If, if you know what I mean. It's an album of extremes. Yes. So that pretty much wraps it up for our review of the Beatles' second album, With the Beatles. Just as some light fun during this time. We hope you guys had fun listening to it. And let us know what you think of the album yourself. You can uh, write us comments. Be sure to subscribe and be sure to like this episode as well. And thank you so much for listening, guys. It's been a lot of fun from me. Hope it's been for you for you guys as well. And you guys oh, listening. Yeah. Thanks for listening, y'all. All right. Thanks, Thanks. guys. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time. And until then, I'm Tom Rutia. I'm Garrett Hicks. Wash your hands. I'm Becca Cristiano. Stay in your home. <laughs> <laughs> and we will see you all next time. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs>Hey guys, thank you so much for listening to part two of our review of the Beatles album with the Beatles here on Triple Threat. Be sure to tell us what you think of the album or the show in the comments and subscribe if you haven't already. We hope that you're all doing well and we'll see you all next time. Bye. Act naturally came along, but Ringo eventually, he, he wasn't able to quite hit it. This is just this. Let's not talk about Act Naturally. No. Not until we talk about help. But they're going to put me in the movies. <laughs> make a big star out of me. But we'll, we'll, we'll save that discussion for help. But, I don't know. but <laughs> needless to say, <laughs> suggesting Meet the Beatles over Abbey Road, the best Beatles album, but yeah, sure. That's a whole take there, Garrett. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. I know. <laughs> no, but uh, are we gonna throw hands on air right now, or are we maybe not on air? But yeah. we'll we'll get to it. It was he, originally he by wrote a... it for. Yeah, go, yeah, I'm gonna stop talking and let you do your thing, Tom. Ah. <laughs> the Stones. They do a really nice job of a of a cover of a song that was given to them. So to speak. I, I'll give it that they did it differently. Yeah, you know, <laughs> wor- wor- worse is different. Yeah, worse is different. <laughs> I'm, I, I mean, I'm just glad. I'm just glad that when they did it, they made it their own. Yeah, I mean, Valid. whether it's good or bad, you could honestly say that they stonesified it. You know, they made it like an R and B like tune, especially with, like with with that riff, like just the bam, bam. I don't. I don't remember how it goes. I haven't listened to it so long. 
Oh, okay. Then then never mind. <laughs> this whole this whole thing is gonna get cut. That's cool. Nope. All right, guys, I'll be back in like two seconds since we have unlimited minutes. I really gotta pee. Yeah, sure. It's sure. probably be a good time to take a break. That's yeah. fine. Delightful. And we can talk about the actual worst song on the album. She didn't hear that. Good. <laughs> Wait, you mean the next one? I, that's that's my pick. Yeah. <clears throat> wow. So I thought I thought I thought "Hold Me Tight" was brutal. To to at, at to least talk that one's, about. At least that one's entertaining to take down, to to make fun of. Oh boy. And and like I said, at least it has a decent middle eight going for it. I'm I'll, I'm I mean on one hand I want to ask you your thoughts already but I'll I'll hold off on it. Uh, <laughs> I I'll tell you that um, I have only one note of substance on my sheet about this. <laughs> All right, that'll be something to look forward to. Yeah, and and it's not like uh, <laughs> it's not like when we did creation and I reviewed the Umagama ad with what what. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a little more than that it's more than four sil- uh, more than four letters it's 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 three words it's three words <laughs> i'm already i'm already picking out what they are in my head one of them is and <laughs> oh then okay then that's not that, that is nowhere near any of the phrases that i that i am thinking something like F- this shit. yeah <laughs> I was thinking, F- this I hate this. Why is this here? Yeah, yeah. Or, uh, it, you're uh, you're on the right track. Give me some. <laughs> give me something else. Why George? Why? I skipped this. I skipped this. <laughs> <laughs> Go suck it. <laughs> no, it's it's not as uh, as colorful or as funny, unfortunately. Oh uh, well, feel free to I guess use any any of those phrases if you need a revision. Mm-hmm. So do you just not like other popular artists like the Stones and David Bowie? Like if something's overhyped, do you just not go for it? It's it's not that. It, mm-hmm. Not entirely that. I mean, I I don't like the Stones because I don't like Mick Jagger's voice and uh, I don't think they're very imaginative and the songs that I hear on the radio all the time are really boring and repetitive and annoying to me. You know, those that sounds like valid reasoning to me. Sure. I mean, yeah. you and I don't I think... talk. I mean, you and I don't talk about the Stones only because, whatever they, because we just we just don't. I know you don't care for them, so I'm like, all right, we're just not gonna talk about them. Sure. Yeah. Stuff like, um, you know, Beasts of Burden, Miss You, and Shattered immediately come to mind as shut up. You're doing the same thing over and over. You have four bars, and you're not repeat, and you're just repeating them. You know. <laughs> I'm, no, I'm uh, too... Sympathy for the Devil is another one. <clears throat> hey, we're just talking about how much I hate the Rolling Stones. They're not great. Like, <laughs> <laughs> they're the one that I just never got into because they're boring. Like, if you heard one, you heard them all. They all sound like that. Okay, thank you. That's that's what I was generally getting across to Tom. I mean, okay. The one exception I will make is Gimme Shelter is a f***ing banger. Oh yeah, I, that I make song that is exception incredible as well. Incredible, and I love it. But the, like, yeah. I don't I, hate the Rolling Stones. It's just like I'd really rather not. Yeah, same. Uh, I, and well, maybe not. No, I think I actually, I actually dislike them. But mainly, uh, it's, mainly it's because of like the ones that I hear on the radio all the time are all the same. Uh, and it's like I, I hear it and I immediately go, okay, changing the station. I uh, like out. A lot of places play give me shelter up here you, yeah, a lot of yeah you've got or working in a preschool working in a preschool mm. and having a lot of kids whose parents having a lot of whiny ass children whose parents routinely just play you can't always get what you want at them oh boy and that song has just taken because then like this, my whenever i act like this mommy plays this song and then they go up to the classroom alexa and they put it on and we're all like this is the funniest so we play it like when they're doing their writing activities and like stuff Fine. like that. That you so got that a good story on a new life to it. Yeah. yeah, that one has taken on a new life for me. Whereas yeah. like, oh, we play it with the little guys. Yeah, I think personally, I think the only times they ever 
showed any creativity was give me shelter and paint it black. So paint it black's pretty dope. Yeah. Well, you know, paint it black. Right. They, they brought in the sitar. So yeah, that that is is yeah. certainly something different. Okay. Anyway, back to back to the the album at hand. 